Hello and welcome back to the Timeline Astrology Podcast with myself, Gary O'Toole. And my guest today is Kishori. Kishori has joined me again for this Maps of Consciousness series as we talk about Rahu, the North Lunar Node, in each of the signs. So we've already talked about Rahu in each of the houses or areas of life, and now we're talking about it in relation to each sign. So when you can put both of those together, you get a better idea of what it's all about for you and what it's all about for general themes. So today's podcast is all about Rahu in Capricorn and Capricorn being the sign ruled by Saturn, Rahu's alter ego as it were. It brings up some interesting dynamics in terms of the groundedness that Kishori refers to for Saturn and yet feeling light as a feather. So It's an interesting take Kishori has on Saturn. We don't often hear it in astrology circles. We normally hear about Saturn as in the malefic Saturn. But Saturn has another role to play. And that is, and especially in relation to Rahu now, that is to ground us in what is real. Not to be realistic necessarily, but to ground us in what is real. And when we do so, we can actually make the most of that and become something else. I think you're going to enjoy this one. It went on a bit longer than our usual podcast in true Saturn style. Saturn's all about the long haul. So hang on in there. I think you're going to find many nuggets in here. And without further ado, here's Kishori. So Kishori, welcome back. Thank you, Gary. It's lovely to be back again. Delighted to have the opportunity to chat with you about these things these mysteries again these mysteries again and we were saying before we recorded that we left this one a bit longer it's been a bit um longer than we normally leave it. it's been a couple of months at least and um we've already started talking about a few things i think that are relevant to rahu and capricorn and one of those things is time because mm. saturn the planet that rules capricorn is called the lord of time mm. and we can talk about its relationship to rahu and, you know, well, let's maybe start there. The fact that, you know, oh, I haven't seen you in a couple of months, but, you know, what is time? <laughs> you know, so uh, and when we when we talk about it's all already happened. It, yeah, for it, it's when I, I must have been 18 and I've got a little bit in a diary I wrote then about time and being like a little thread trickling through it, it, infinity or the timeless state. And then, and then I would be writing about endings. I mean, I was 18, 19. And it's like, I could see myself being this little thread trickling through, but all the other threads were there. And it was endless, an endless sea of threads of light and what I call candy floss. When I look at, when I look at the space around me, it's all full of little, little threads, <laughs> of little filaments of light. And, and I call it candy floss. I call everything by rather um, childlike names because it makes people stop thinking they know what it is. <laughs> or it makes me, I, I say what, what it's like. So anyway, time, I, I have seen this existence a bit like, you know, those snow globes that people, mm-hmm. Christmas especially, but um, I've got one somewhere, another one that I, I got from, someone brought me from Paris. but. It's like a pseudopodic finger of the absolute penetrating this little little globe that we live in of time, little little space-time bubble, you know? And you can be anywhere, or like a camera obscura, you know, where you've got the, mm. the, 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 the pointer wherever you want to go. And and if you like, let's imagine the mind of God or the absolute or whatever you want to call it, the, the everything, um, which is nothing and everything and everything in between as well. Just saying, oh, well, let's go and watch that little bit of movie today or let's go. So from where I am, where the eye in, in Jeanette is, in Kishori, is, is like I look at my little bit, but it's also like a fly's eye. You know, you can you can see everything at once. If you step back far enough, I mean, <clears throat> and you can see it all, but you can't really enjoy the taste of one little raspberry if you're eating everything all jumbled up. You can be, even me in this 
little body now. I, I can at will go to any point in time. And I am sure that teleporting is like that. You can teleport to anywhere in time. <clears throat> and um, yeah, uh, I've already had experiences sort of like that, not, not fully. But I know that what I'm engaging in now is taking me more and more and more into uh, being very anchored into this moment here, feet on the ground, talking to Gary or whatever. Um, and also more and more and more spacious. And space includes time. And we already know from listening to what <clears throat> the astronauts and the scientists say about quantum physics and that it depends where you look where you're looking from. So to really be into bringing into form the joy of what, and the experience that we want, you know, that, that game of manifesting, what you want, <laughs> it, you, you just have to fully love it so much that you merge with it, and then, and then you are there. And when you look at things like, uh, people talk about out of body experiences or near death experiences, and you just look and see well, what's really happening when you take away the, <clears throat> the unreal. Let's call, the, let's call everything in our body, like a samskara, uh, that's not been revised or made perfect or whatever. Um, though I don't like to use the word perfect because our vocabulary here is so, uh, so limiting. It, it's like, but, but brought into coherence or into, into harmony. And, when that is not present, when you don't look through those filters, when you look from, from allowing anything, everything, and loving the whole story, not just the nice bits or the bits that you want, but all of it. And I guess playing with Rahu most of my life has been what I've been doing, having been um, <clears throat> brought up on the, the wounds and the stations of the cross and Christ in crucified and all that. <clears throat> good little Catholic girl I was, and because life wasn't very wonderful in my home, <laughs> I just went to the quietness, sitting at the back of a, an old monastery church and feeling the energy. So I did the Stations of the Cross, and that's been that restoration, if you like, of that, that one of the most horrific, if you like to look at it in that way, stories. But there you go. So... It's all of a piece, it's all. And there is, time is not a reality, but it's an experience. I want to um, hang on that yeah. word, hang on that word reality a bit. Yeah. <laughs> so this, when, when someone says to be realistic versus oh, yes. to be real, Right, because that's what Capricorn is all about, really. It's the sign that is probably, you might say, it gets labeled the most pragmatic and practical. It's an earth sign. It's Saturn ruled, and it's all about what is, and let's get real, and all of that. This is what is in this moment. This is this space-time experience I'm having right now. Yes. And in a way, it's hard to, once that happens, once something happens, quote-unquote, yes. um, it can be very easy just to kind of get locked into that. And that cannot be any other way. Like I am now in this relationship. I am now in this job. I am in this home. I am in this body. This is what is right. That's very Capricorn in a way. Whereas Rahu is like the sort of alter ego of Saturn, astrologically speaking. So it's kind of like, I imagine what you would talk about in terms of, yes, you, you sat in the church and he used the stations of the cross as a template maybe, but then to spring from that, right? To kind of let your imagination run wild, right? Because mm. that's for me always the kind of juxtaposed position between Saturn and Rahu, where it's like taking what is, but then shaking it up. What could be? Well, it can always, from where I am, <laughs> my, my individual perspective, anything can be anything. <laughs> anything can be, you know, the ultimate shape-shifting thing. Um, and yes, I, I was totally, really grounded in this experience. And for me, Jesus was real. And uh, the day and, and, and my, my whole life was dependent upon that version of the infinite, if you like. One day, um, um, uh, I must have been in my 40s, perhaps, no, something like that anyway. Yeah, early 40s. 
Jesus kicked me out of the church. And he, the, I was looking at this statue of the Sacred Heart. And um, he said, you've got to go from this place. He said, it's not your place anymore. Go. It's, it, this is not your archetype anymore. Just go. And I felt kicked out. And of course... Um, I'm wondering, it was that uh, a Raho period in your life? <laughs> it may have been. I, it was the beginning of the of my, of my getting divorced, of my um, deciding I couldn't marry, I couldn't stay any longer with this. Um, the husband I'd got, who had been studying to be a Catholic priest for half his life, <laughs> and and it was my my life, but not the church, because I never really agreed with what the priest was saying. And it was um, I, I was selected, um, uh, asked by one priest in when I lived in Wiltshire, if I would do the instruction for the kids who weren't going to Catholic schools, and I said, oh yes. And he said, he said, you're a bit of a heretic. He said, but I trust you. And I mean, I had to deal with kids who rabbits were dying. I don't know. I didn't teach them anything. The church said, I don't know. I, I just said, well, what you love is real, and it will never die, and then things like that. And I got them to know the rabbit wasn't dead, if you know what I mean. Mm. <laughs> and that nothing ever dies. But during that time, I was exploring by teaching them or sharing with them what they wanted to explore, what I wanted to know. I mean, I was them, if you like. They were, they were, it was for me, the whole thing was set up. So, you know, and now I've lost the thread, my dear. Remind no, me, it, we, we were just about, talking about... Um, Time. real versus reality space oh yeah time. realistic realistic yes okay so yes you it, uh, i guess the merging of those or the living of the two at the same time the 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 real i would define what i love as real nothing else is real only what i really well i didn't know that all of my life but now i absolutely know now and that and that realistic is a, a very, it dismisses fairyland. It dismisses the possibility of shape-shifting. It dismisses magic and it dismisses that ability to, to make dragons your friend, to have Rahu as a lover, to make, to have all of that, the merging of the opposites. There's, um, there's, um, in realistic, you cannot be, the two opposites at the same time. Now, be realistic. You can't, you can't be both and. You can't be here and there at the same time. You can't be uh, not yet born and yet obviously here. You, you, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's so, so we have to be very careful with realistic. Being, being abs able to be fully occupying your body or your little bit of everyday life, you know, sitting here, making sure I've got clean clothes and hot water to drink and, you know, the ordinary everyday things, your to-do list, if you like. But knowing that it could change at a moment, if I love, if I choose, and if I'm not enjoying something, I, I go to my heart and I feel and see it differently. But we were talking before we began this about story. Now we all love story. I was talking to you about adding the, the padders, the little bits in my story of old diaries. <clears throat> and I got bored writing the ones that were like didactic. But I was interested, even though I was half asleep, writing, copying out or reading, because I was doing a dictating thing um, where it wrote the you know where the text appears and and i could go on forever with that because i remembered it i relived it i would go back to it occasionally change a tiny word which didn't fully um express or, or give the the detail but story and loving is the most amazing thing and if that's not can't be called realistic well not in the way we use the meaning of, of that word um because it's what you love that's real mm. that grounds it if you don't love it you know like this eating is food that's good for you rather than something that you absolutely adore but then being really careful 
that you've got all the ducks lined up in your body. You know, you, you can't live on chocolate ice cream, for example, or well, you could, I suppose. <laughs> but oh, it yeah. depends, I suppose, again, on the the way that you use story, what stories you tell yourself and how that, you know, this thing of, you know, for me, it seems anyway, that real seems to be, you know, where we can start from, where we can use uh, like a springboard, um, whereas realistic is in a way implying to limit yourself and to not think above your station. Would it not? Well, I don't know if that's what it is for you, then that, that is what that, that is what it is for me, because if someone says, oh, be realistic, that's what that means, surely. I suppose it does. But when you say above your station, that was interesting. I was thinking like upstairs, downstairs. And um, if actually it is a bit like upstairs, downstairs, because we are everything. If when you only got to step out of just for a moment and, and flip to that state that knows, wow, what is my identity? What am I really? I'm certainly not this body, this archaeological body. I mean, I am it, but it's an expression of me. It's not what I am. So I suppose then maybe to fix in one point in time, you have to be, I don't know. I suppose I must be very unrealistic. And yet, and yet I live and, and I have a house and I have, you know, I can. Well, when you think about that, like, because I've been thinking about this a lot lately, where you know how um, you might have um, heard of Esther Hicks and Abraham Hicks and the law of attraction and yes, manifesting yes. what you want and all of that. Yes. I, I was at one of their gigs once in Dublin and it was a big concert hall. And so I was there in, in person and I've seen their videos online and I do find Esther Hicks a really inspiring speaker, right? Yes. But what is she essentially doing? She's essentially actually telling you not to be realistic. That she actually uses that language. So yes, she says, I, don't I, look I, at I, what I, is. Don't look at, at what is around you in your environment. What, it, what, do you, what, what do you want? Absolutely, because what you want is what you love and what is around you is already the past. It's archaeology. Right. But see, that's the point. You see, that is, for me, taking Capricorn and what is and being realistic, but what is and Saturn and flipping it and bringing in Rahu, which is what could be. Rahu, to me, is like this uh, mother lioness or whatever, going, not that way, and knocking it with your, her paw and saying, no, because out of love, she's saying, no, and that's not a good way to go, little cub. Go this way. But um, can you see how it might be? Because like, yeah. it makes so much sense when you say that's archaeology, that what is around you in your present environment in your present body is the past manifesting right but with rahu it's like always bringing it forward that's why rahu is said to yeah. rule aquarius in astrology it's the next sign it's the next stage it's the innovation right but when rahu comes into capricorn as it will in the next few years but yes. if it is in someone's chart they're having to play with this balance between both this kind of be realistic but also imagine something better or greater or whatever well, I, I I don't know, just the newness, isn't it? It's the tip of the arrow. It's the, that, you know, the movement, the movement. It's always the newness because it's in every breath. It's like the ocean. You know, you get a wave, a big wave, a little wave, whatever, but it's always that rhythm of the movement and there's something new. So it rises and has a beautiful shape and then it, and then it, crashes and falls and and then there's always the new coming is always the breathing is the same um i don't know maybe realistic has to have a different a slightly different meaning more like being grounded because when you talk about um <clears throat> saturn and Ra and capricorn um i get i get excited because i feel that the more it grounds, and yet we look at it lightly without making it permanent, the more the absolute or the, the more comes into experience. 
because unless it's actually tangible, you know, but as the minute it gets to be tangible, it has to be let go of. So something about the word realistic seems to pin it down like Gulliver, you know, mm. being tied down. So if we could see realistic from the point of view of the of love, we can enjoy the way you've got the room arranged now, but you might get inspired to move this bookcase or, you know, or wear a different colored jersey or i i don't know i mean i'm giving very little practical realistic examples no but it just makes so much sense it's so, so powerful for me because it's that sense of using the now what is to be whatever to because you can't like you say if every anything is possible theoretically anything could be anything yes. where do we start you start with what you love and you start with what i call the keala and the keala is the impulse in the heart. Now, I might have, and I did as a child, have the feeling I could fly. And I do remember flying downstairs. It probably was a dream, but... Uh, ah, you know. no, but who told you at what point or where did it sleep into your consciousness that you couldn't? I might have, I might have tried, I don't know. Being realistic to me means being aware that what I love and what I would love to do, which would be just to... I don't know. Let's say, come and have a cup of tea with you right now, rather than talking on on uh, Zoom. Uh, on Zoom. And uh, and you know, I could say, oh look, show me that little little statue you've got there with that little book. And I can't. Well, we could zoom in on it, but I I, I can't get the full on uh, full full spectrum experience of being in your room there on Zoom. I can get good enough. Um, and maybe. Maybe I feel that the, the new creation, the new human being, which I already see is exists, but as in this part of time, not yet born, is so fluid. It's that super fluid state that I haven't even got a word that will capture the super fluid feeling that I have. Is that is that that teleporting and time traveling are not closed doors but are natural, normal, because it's, 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 and yet, and yet you can do like, let's say Babaji's guru did, and they were able to actually touch and feel. I mean, I, I know that you can go and appear like a vision in a room. And I know my, some people who experience me like that, but I, to be there actually, totally, you have to be at one point, you've got to be one, raspberry or one pixel or one little cell of the raspberry bursting to give you that taste and we don't have that yet at least i don't have as much as i would like i can feel that i can see it though i can imagine it but the gift of imagination can really take us anywhere and i have a sense that uh, grounding right now grounding is important because if you don't ground you can't really feel. You're off in some, and I'm sure I spent a lot of time as a child like that, not floating up in a space above my above my body here, somewhere up here to the right, <laughs> where the flashes of lightning come from. But but you have to ground, but you have to be so light with it that you don't cry over that that wave that you've got there breaking. I love this uh, grounding, but being light with it. I think we really have to focus on yeah. that because Saturn is always, always astrologically seen as the bad guy, the demon, the Satan. So is right? Rahu. So is and Rahu too. But it's Saturn more so in a way because people actually don't know about Rahu so much. They don't know about their own shadow. They all, most people coming to astrology have this preconceived idea about what Saturn is and that basically it's it's grounding you to the point of stopping you. You can't go anywhere with this. And now you're saying, actually, the grounding can be also light, which I love. If you, if you don't ground, it doesn't get experienced fully. And it's still like a ticking time bomb in the unconscious. If you have a desire which isn't fulfilled, which isn't allowed, shall we say, to, to not, not fulfilled, because it's the doing that gets in people's way, gets in the mind, because you can't do it but you do have to allow it. And I see 
and I remember writing a piece once about living as <clears throat> you might imagine a fairy in a forest. And a fairy doesn't actually sit there and say, well, I'm going to have to ground, otherwise I won't be able to pick that toadstool to sit on or pick some cow slips to sip the nectar or whatever. Fairy doesn't, you don't imagine that, you know? Mm. And yet, and yet it's like a will of the wisp. It's following that word keala. Remember I talk about the word keala. You have your keala in the heart. The keala is that little whim. But we can't just follow the whim until we fully uh, experienced whatever it is has to happen to get to that super. We can't go, I can't go up and on my roof and, and fly off it yet. Not in this part of this type of time, but if I can imagine it, and I can, and I know of, of people like saints and yogis that have levitated. Well, now here you're bringing me to another crucial point in terms of this um, this concept. Nowadays, there's a lot of talk about hyper reality and a book oh, recently yeah. that, yeah, reality plus, right? It's all of this kind of hyper realism that we're living in now in the yeah. online world, right? And, you know, so and again, what is real? You know, you remember that lovely book, The Velveteen Rabbit, and the little rabbit says to the skin also, and what, what is real? Mm. And he says, well, when all your skin's been rubbed off and your eyes have fallen out and all of this, and when, when a child has loved you, then you become real. And it's beautiful. I always remember that because it's so encapsulate that you have to actually live it. You have to get into the body and imagine it and feel it. So it's all very well being hyper real but you know you still have to well you don't have to because i'm exploring it at the moment not eating not eating ordinary food but you have to be nourished by something and it at my sense is it's what you love always the same it always the same answer what you love makes it real if you haven't tasted it you can sit it remember my, my i was little my mother had an american woman's cookbook and the inside had um little fondant fancies, beautiful colours and so elegant. And it was a very big book. My brother and I used to sit and go, I want that one with the green icing and I want this one. And we would sit for hours eating them, but it wasn't the same as tasting the little little, little baby cakes that my grandma would make that weren't anything fancy, but they tasted nice. If you don't taste it with the senses, and I... All the hyper stuff and the meta stuff and everything, it's great, but it's the imagination. But to make it real, you want to embody it. But the body has to be a space where you can experience them, but not archaeology. And most of our bodies are still archaeological, not super fluid. We want to be able to do both and. And it's in, in a realistic world. You can't be both and. You want to be able to be as light as a feather and yet fully here present and be able to, like Yogananda did, touch Sri Yukteswar with his hand and feel his flesh. And like, and, and like, uh, like Jesus in the, uh, after the resurrection, no, 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 limitandere, don't touch me. I'm not yet ascended, meaning he was not yet fully there to be touched but implied that he, there would be a time when he could be. I don't, I haven't, I'm not going into all of that, what that meant, but, but, but. <clears throat> but we could also say that that's happening even in terms of, again, the technological advancements. Well, you're going online and you're in this metaverse and you're not going to obviously taste and smell things. You are seeing things, but they're actually working on technology where you can actually touch things. Oh, I'm sure they are. They are. Because, because they're bringing into form, what is happening is bringing into form these desires to do the impossible. Nothing is impossible. Mind says, at this point in time, yes. But it's not impossible. My being told me years ago, he said, anything you can imagine, whether it's in a story or you've actually experienced it, past or future, whatever, is possible for you. I went, wow, anything. And that was a promise from that, that, that knowing that, that has, has lived, delivered me to the, where I am now in this. That, I, I, wanna, I think that, that, that brings us to our next uh, topic because I, we talked about this before we started recording. I think it's a really important one to talk about, and that is prana, oh, life yeah. force. Yeah, 
because Saturn is astrologically, it rules um, health. It's a planet of disease, but obviously there implies that it's a planet of health when you look after yourself and you do all the things you're supposed to do. And especially it governs um, the air element. So, you know, and prana and the life force as we breathe, all of that. And you're talking about not just prana, you're talking about um, restricting your food intake, for example, like the prana in food, right? It's not restricting. I always said years ago when I talked about the possibility, and I don't use this word breatharian or anything, it's like being metabolically flexible. And metabolically flexible is not needing to eat, but being able to taste. And mostly we don't need or we don't desire more than a taste. I mean, I think I told you the story of um, of um, Arthur Ransom going to uh, the Venus to Perilandra <clears throat> and finding that tree and they ate that Venus before the fall and uh, and they discovered this tree and you ate, eat one fruit and then the next, second one they picked tasted foul. The first one was delicious, nectar, and the next one is and then they realized it's always the first and when and when you feel that the first like mm, when I talk about Keala, the impulse, the whim. <gasps> And we can't fly off a roof yet. We can't, or at least maybe you can, I don't know. But people are going nearer and nearer to it, like uh, with paragliding and things like that. They do the best they can. But you know what? It is, exists already. Where it's the space where everything's already done. We are going through that stage of time, moving towards it, just so we can experience the fun of discovering it. I mean, imagine what it must have been like to get in the first plane and actually fly. Yeah, we did it. We did it. We did it. You know, mm. the same as same as it all. So prana. I just feel like this this topic is so important because you're talking about you're 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 just um, lightly stepping over things that probably a lot of people listening to this would be very much bogged down in. Okay, so I think we need to what probably. What have I just said? Tell me then. What have I just said? So be a, a bogged down place. Well, again, coming from an astrology perspective, and let's face it, most of the people listening to this will be coming from that perspective. They, yeah. There's a lot of baggage with Saturn. There's a lot of sense of, it's like even the word Saturn, Satan, or Sat even, like it just feels heavy and gravity and heavy. But what you're talking about is this lightness that people don't often think about with Saturn. It's and that, yes, we can be real, quote unquote, but then from there we can imagine. And this, and I know you don't like the word restrict, but this is again a word that's applied a lot to Saturn. So, but in a positive way, let's look at what's happening today with the science that we know now, restricting our diet, like intermittent fasting, like improves your life, like increases your lifespan, first of all, right? It it shakes up all of those or digests or, you know, what's that word? autophagy it like it digests all of those you know cells that need to be like all of those things happen and you feel lighter and clearer and all of that that's very light so that makes sense and prana which is like even thinking about breathing how counterintuitively maybe the less you breathe the better you are the better the more fit you are the more healthy you are the less you breathe Right. And the whole relationship between oxygen and carbon dioxide. And actually, if you breathe less, you um, your blood has enough carbon dioxide in its um, circulation so that it releases the oxygen to your tissues. So you've got more energy, you've got more life. And like the ancient yogis who used to breathe a lot less than we do, that was their practice. They lived a lot longer. So all of that ties in with Saturn, basically. And I know maybe the word restriction is maybe not the best word to use. And I like the way you're coming at it. Riverbed. Where, ri yeah, riverbed. Yeah, that's a good, maybe and, a better and, way to look and, at and, it. And, and let's see, how long would a Zen archer have to have practiced to be able to stand and just follow his keala and release the arrow so that he knew he already was the target? I mean, there's been a lot of, you might call it restriction, but he probably enjoyed his practice. And if, if we if we change it to uh, resting rather than restricting, intermittent fasting, fasting itself, when I changed my 
my um and I, i've done lots and lots of fast and long fast and little fast and juice fast and water fast and, but <clears throat> when i changed the word to resting and 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 allowing a different form of being nourished from <clears throat> from simply prana without specifying exactly though there are scientific ways that can show that we 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 don't need food it's not necessary to activate the the atp the you know the adenosine drives phosphate the the mitochondria not necessary but it is necessary as you see it so it shall be so if that's your given law rule you've adopted that then that's the way it will be and that's the way that the yogis do the yogi stuff you know they know and if you move more and, more, and look what we can do now when you're a little three-year-old you look at daddy's car and you think oh wow you never th i didn't think of, of me ever driving one actually at that age but you expand and you expand and you expand to know that you can do everything if you look from the beginning what does a little fetus it is able to, to, to accomplish nothing, very little. But you expand and expand in, in all ways, in all dimensions. Greater things than these ye shall do, says Jesus at the end, or says in the, if reported to have said. And, and uh, the, the last of them is, the, is a lot of these thresholds that we have. And when you get, um, let's say, a virtuoso violinist, may often, quite often, they've been blind or... Um, not able, one of the senses has been cut down. It is like a restriction, but it's a surrender in order for more. It, it may not be, the, the, the implication that we put into that word restriction, you know, it's not quite, you have to, have to not make assumptions about anything. One of the, the instructions I have had years ago is don't make any judgments, any assumptions, look very carefully. You know, that's, we get that in the, in, the, in the gospel as well, judge not. So it, and don't assume, just be very curious and practice the art of self-inquiry. What am I? What is this body? What am I here for? What do I want? What do I love? And if that is going on all the time, even with Saturn, you can love Saturn. Look how I said Rahu is my lover. Well, I mean, most people wouldn't say that, but... Um, and Saturn, I do remember having long encounters with Saturn. It's like a, like a mother lioness, like I said at the beginning. A cub's going to, I don't know, fall into the river or something. She gives a big clout with her, her paw. Is that out of her desire to hurt? No. So Saturn, I would see, is, is really a protector, a supporter, a movement towards towards fulfilling the more. He saves me. He saved me a lot of time. I say, it, tell him, just listening to what I was being shown, going down potholes that I didn't need to have gone down. I've gone down a load of those, but I probably could have gone down more. Might even be dead. And I mean, might even have dropped this body. <laughs> For some reason, I'm keeping it because I've got a lot more to explore. I just feel this is absolutely gold i mean it's like it's just so important to hear this kind of language around a planet that is so demonized and this sense of you know let's say let's maybe use the word focus instead of restrict maybe yes to focus and that focus being the kind of way to expand for me is just a perfect expression of saturn and rahu and capricorn and all of that Look, I've got a picture actually up on my wall, and it looks yeah. stares down at me every day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it down. And show you. What is it? And it's of Capricorn. Oh and yes. Look at it's what is the image? It's you know you're familiar with the goat and all of that, and, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the mountain and all the getting to the top of the mountain. But it's a young boy holding this flag, and you know it's like there is this kind of, you know, obviously Capricorn has this the the symbolism of getting to the top of the mountain, and you obviously you don't get there in one fell swoop right well unless you learn to fly maybe that will happen uh, paraglide whatever but it's like you know you get there you just you, you you expect to get there right and however you expect to get there and 
So I think that's an important lesson as well in terms of Rahu, because Rahu and Capricorn, what they both might have in common, you could say, is ambition to get there in the first place. Yes. Like whatever you want. I want, I desire whatever. I, I guess one of the things that I would say is that when they used to talk about <clears throat> planets being malefic, you know, um, and benefic, and, and I would say, well, if there is only one. Therefore, all the planets must be there, or the planetary deities <clears throat> must all be there as expressions of the absolute. And as the bias, and I mean it seriously, the bias of consciousness of creation is always to express love. That ultimately, it must be the more and the harmony. Ultimately, it doesn't mean you don't don't experience uh, disharmony, um, <clears throat> but it has to be part of, it has to be included. You must <clears throat> love your whole story. Never, never resist anything. Go to accepting and embracing and allowing. That doesn't mean to say that you have to keep it. That's making it archeological. But yes, allow, and then go to the place in the heart, which is the neutral space or the heart frequency where you are able to see a different possibility and know that if you love that in that little that little moment of keala that impulse you can say oh yes yes please and at some point in your life story you will and i will say this absolutely you will experience it if you and and it's the art of saying yes in the middle of circumstances that i guess i've been playing with most of my life from that starting off you know? I'm, I'm writing an article at the moment about Saturn and it moving into Aquarius because that's the next stage of our evolution now. It's been in Capricorn since the beginning of 2020, actually. So that's why we've been having a lot of Saturn type themes of restriction of literally like lockdowns. Right. But it's moving into Aquarius in January 2023. Um, and I'm calling it um, resist resistance. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, include it. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. Because, it's, and you remember, you told me how you like to somehow. De I don't know, not procrastinate, but get to the the limit of a uh, something, and then and uh, just mm -hmm. to experience the release. Well, it's a bit. It, that's what we do in life, you know. We mm -hmm. we reach the peak, and then and then it dissolves. It's like the waves of the ocean. It goes on and on and on and on and on. Oh, but here's a, here's a major thing I need to talk about because I've had this realizations recently about Rahu and that, and it's taken me 18 years to get here, but I've got it now. Um, and that is, you see, Capricorn is all about reaching the peak, whatever the peak is. I want to be the, whatever I want this, I want that. But Man. Rahu is just the desire. It seems like I, you, I can definitely correlate Raho with dopamine, which dopamine isn't about getting anything. Dopamine is about the drive for anything, for whatever. So when you do reach the top of the mountain, it's like, then what? Because the desire, does, Raho is a desire for, it's like there's another peak and another peak and another peak and it never ends, right? Of course, the next wave comes and the next wave reaches its peak and then breaks and then, you know. There's but there's this, this sense, there is this, well, I guess this is what we need to drop as well, that there's this sense of the, that it ends, that there is one peak and that's all there is, right? Exactly. Well, there is no end. It's a constant revisiting of the, the possibilities within the all. And never, ever in your mind say, well, that's not for me, or never, never. And especially this th the thresholds, like of death. You know, what... What they're doing in, in the tech stuff now, I mean, it's just amazing. But when somebody, a, a being, has lived, if you identify with an archaeological body and not in the transformation of that body or uh, find your true identity of being the, the, the absolute, being the, the, I don't know, whatever, whatever name we call it, doesn't matter. Um, if you identify with the limited... But if you don't limit, for an example, to one thing, like tasting the raspberry, I said, that if you've got a big table full of food and you try and cram it all in, you, you don't get the exquisite pleasure. So limiting or confining or 
determining like a Zen archer to hit that mark and only that mark. So when you say that you, and I don't know how you would say it, but like you, you are basically um, wanting to eat less, quite simply. <laughs> what is the desire behind that? Okay, okay, okay. So I'm, I look always at resolving a, an experience restriction, right? Mm. So in the past, I've done many, many fasts um, with the mm, desire to give my system a rest, to, give, to, to remove inflammation, to, to um, whatever. It doesn't matter what, the, but there would be an impulse to solve it. And <clears throat> realizing uh, from when I was very young, um, remembering as well, looking over these padders and my old diaries, that my mother said I was so difficult, I wouldn't eat anything. She said, you never used to want to eat. And I realized that the need for anything is a limitation. And it's not that I don't want to, or I want to eat less. It's not that at all. It's looking to see what, and I'm realizing a long time ago that food is for entertainment, for pleasure, for delight, for enjoyment, and um, e eating more, let's say eating two bars of chocolate when you really wanted a little taste, <clears throat> it ruins the experience. You then get sick and you don't want it. You don't want any of it. So you, you re and also observing some of the difficulties in the world, and one of them is the fact that many people are starving and many people uh, are, well, just overeating or, 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 or I don't know, but, but there's always complications around the issues of food, money, everything. So I look at all of these world difficulties and <clears throat> I realize that what does nourish me is, is prana for a long, long time. Didn't mean I stopped eating. And I don't think apart from when you look at what breatharians do, they do a transition, but not all of them, some of them spontaneously. If you look at the, the mythological ones or the stories in the literature, like <clears throat> Theresa Neumann and like, um, or that young girl in the forest in India who said, uh, my mother-in-law is, is telling me I'm greedy, so I don't want to eat ever again. I can't remember her name, but she's one that met Yogananda. But there are people like that just spontaneously stopped because it's interesting how th there's a new movie out um, that's called The Wonder, and it's literally about that subject. It's about a young girl who stops eating and doesn't need to eat, and she's not becoming malnourished. There's nothing wrong with her. And the story's about a nurse who comes to visit her, her and they, they have to watch her because they don't understand what she's doing to be able to survive and thrive even. And so they have to put her on watch 24 hours a day. It's called The Wonder. Yes, but the thing is, we already know scientifically I was reading a little bit about it, and I don't know a lot, that, <clears throat> that, that, that the scientific way of how the cells or the, um, the, the mitochondria use prana, and you can switch. It's just like switching fuel from, uh, from carbs to, to, to being ketogenic, you know? Mm. Um, it's just a different kind of fuel. But we don't actually get our, our life force or our energy from food. It may seem that way, but when you start inquiring deeply, you see that it doesn't actually come from but, food. Well, let's face it also that most of the food that most people eat these days is completely devitalized anyway. It has no prana. A <laughs> um, um, friend was telling me um, yesterday about a, a child uh, who I've met actually, and he lives on uh, um, chicken nuggets and um, rice crisp rice crackers and he doesn't really want anything to eat and he's very well and he's fine and um there are things that many people can do which seem impossible to mind and i tell you it depends entirely on what the laws not even your conscious beliefs but what the laws that you have laid down in your own uh, magical empire and so if you want to do something and all uh, uh, that your mind thinks is impossible, you just go inside to the heart place where there is no limitation and just say yes, and it will come into your life. I'm telling you, the easiest way of, of, of playing with talking about manifestation ever, it's your own judgment or your own assumptions that make it impossible for you. And if what you really want is 
I really would love a Lamborghini, but that, oh, that's impossible. I mean, I haven't even got enough to buy a bicycle. You just go inside, love it. And the, the more you can let go, the faster it will come. Some, and you get to being a, a, a Rishi or something, you click your fingers and it happens. Okay, so now I want to ask you about the other side of that coin, because yes. you uh, um, talked earlier about uh, you know getting a cold and all of that and how well mm-hmm. what happens then because most of most people's experience of Saturn i.e typically restriction is through ill health so what happens then when you're coming from that perspective where you get ill and the desire obviously is a very strong desire to be well to or to, to do whatever how, how do you switch that when you're not feeling well ah that's 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 the, the trick <laughs> that's it how do you be full of joy like let's talk about what's his name um frankel victor frankel man's search for meaning you're in a concentration camp you're going you're going to end up in the in the ovens very soon or maybe how does your joy or your inner freedom knowing that you are sovereign really sovereign with your imagination and your love and to, to be able to stay in that state, how could someone like a Christ stay in that state of knowing? I mean, whatever you believe about that doesn't matter. It's just a, a story. It could be just a story. How to be so full of that, even in complete abandonment, to be still happiness? Not just to be happy as an emotion, but to be happiness, to know that's what you are. You know, it's the game that we're all here for. To experience being, and it's, it's what, it's, if you like the story of the absolute, why did it bother to create this, you know? Why did it bother to, to limit itself to being in one story, but there are lots of stories, to one little tiny, helpless, vulnerable little baby in order to have the experience of going through into being, recognizing what we all already are? I mean, even if just right now you think, oh, just talking a load of rubbish, just say, well, wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it be just wonderful to know that I could have anything I wanted right now just by imagining it? Even if you don't believe it, wouldn't it be nice to be able to? Well, beliefs are like that. You can input different beliefs. I mean, it's already been proven in, 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 in other ways, like NLP. You believe something and your whole paradigm changes we are we are absolutely sovereign over everything and if we experience what we like to call restriction or limitation this is if and the absolute desired or had the impulse or it was innate to to have a form to be to experience the opposite the union of opposites this this in this world of duality that's what we have to come to we're in this world of duality. And I used to ask myself, what, what, what was the benefit of being in a world with so much suffering and horror? And, you know, many of the, all the philosophers have asked that. It's so that we can, we can choose. We are here to make choices. Now, we can't make choices all the time with our hands, say, you know, can't go and pick up a, a burning coal. But we are all, if we go to different states, look at the people who do fire walking. I don't, I don't fancy it personally, but but uh, <laughs> but I know it's totally possible mm. because people do it. And even if you know, just thinking about whatever is happening, it's you can always just change your way of looking at what's happening. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Change your way of looking. Change your 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 perspective change the point from where you look in space or time or in attitude and everything shifts but in fact actually i was reading recently that scientists were talking about the universe and how theoretically there just could not be just one universe there has to be just like these uh, other dimensions and other realities existing uh, coexisting you know so this what you talked about earlier i think before we started recording about time space but time overlapping time and that it all already is yes so it's like this kind of yeah we have to be maybe focused in this space time reality but there are many realities if my body were not limited to being within this skin 
I'd be spread out all over the place. I couldn't experience what I'm experiencing by being within this skin. Can you imagine? You'd be like a, a ganga <laughs> all <laughs> over the place, you know, in little bits and pieces. And that is really, in a nutshell, really what we're talking about when we're focusing with Saturn and Rahu and Saturn combined, how we take all of that and focus it. If you if you look at them with curiosity, real curiosity, and and welcome them like the Atiti, like the, un, the uninvited guest, and go, okay, you're here, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing this, this period when astrology says I'm going to be restricted in this way. Say, okay, I'm going to make friends with you. And you must be here. You cannot exist in order to, for my harm. It's, it's no way. They are, I don't know, wise counselors, uh, they, they, whatever. But if you, if when, when you, when you stop considering them as um, this word malefic, which is why I used to, I, I actually don't, them. you, I don't use words uh, like malefic. I'm not saying malefic. you. I'm saying no, no, not anymore. But I was taught that for years, so I do, I in, do get in, in India. The Jyotish is in India when I was there, yeah, for sure. And that's it. So, but so, the root, the actually the 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 correct translation of the Sanskrit is kruya and uh, samnya. So it's cruel or kind. And that's very different because sometimes you need to be cruel to be kind. Sometimes you you probably shouldn't eat that cake, <laughs> take it away from the child, right? Or sometimes right. or sometimes you can be killed with kindness. It doesn't actually mean good or bad, cruel or kind. But when you say cruel or kind, if Saturn is a cruel planet, a cruel planet, <laughs> it's just teaching you that lesson that way. Because we do have to acknowledge the focal point of the time we're in, whatever that time is, we can change how we perceive that time. Exactly. Yes. But that's the key point, right? And the main, the main thing I would say, the easiest way, because we haven't, we haven't yet fully reached the absolute of being everything, experiencing it. We haven't. We are moving through. And each one of us is completely an individualized uh, universe, every one of us. So... So if you change from resisting or anticipating with uh, trepidation or a judgment about what it might be and go to just simply being open, curious and loving, love it, because, oh, something new, oh, you can have a totally different experience. And once you merge, you match, I use the word match completely, whatever situation is, you become the box that you're locked in. You become the matrix that you might be um, imprisoned in, the river bed. It's gone. You become it. Therefore, you are master of it. That's what I am personally play with a lot. I'm not saying you can't. It's like we set up the game, the game of being uh, human beings. I mean, there are other shapes and forms to be, you know, and at some point, in your consciousness, I'm sure you, you're aware of what people call past lives or other dimensions or things. Uh, and there are, set, set, depending on, on what kind of, of, uh, of uh, psyche you have, you've inherited, you can experience more or less, you know? And, and also depending on, I suppose, the, 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 the little portal of the moment you are born, that gives you your, your, your astrological imprint, but they're all imprints on the stuff of consciousness. And so once that realization starts to really be clear, even if the experience isn't there, you could investigate. It's like, that's the way you are right now, but you know deep in your heart that you're not limited. It depends on where the curiosity comes. And that's what I call the keala, the impulse in the moment. Like you have the impulse to go and spend the winter in Spain. Well, so you start, if it was just a little fleeting fancy, you might not do it for another few years, but it's now and it's strong. And so therefore you start putting in place the things that will naturally make it happen. To be what you have chosen, you as the you prior to incarnating, let's say, or that part, portion of the absolute that before prior, I mean, we can't say prior because we're living in, in, well, anyway, never mind. But that part of you that it is chosen that, mm. once you fully, fully embrace it, you are free necessarily. Just like I said, once you say, I am the box, 
I am the prison bars. There are no prison bars because they're you and you can change them. The minute you totally embrace any, as you call it, restriction, and it becomes not a restriction, it turns into the opposite. So the same thing, when you fully embrace the atiti, the, un the uninvited or the unexpected guest, it becomes a welcome visitor and it turns into Krishna because that's the law, that's how it works in our world. This is just, I mean, this is just gold. I'm just going to have to come up with better words, I think, because obviously with Saturn, we, we just get taught these words that are restrictive, literally. And I know that's a word that many people can use differently, right? But I just think if we use different words, it's going to help what you're talking about now. You've got I've to love him. You have to say, hi, Saturn. Okay, I see that you are here for my ultimate magnificence, for what I truly desire to bring all my, and you're really clear about what you want, which is this question, this, this instruction. Tell me what you really, 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 really want. And go deeper and deeper, deeper into the heart, not just, oh, I, you know, I want a, a Big Mac or whatever it is. I want, I want, I want my magnificence. I want to be full spectrum. I want to shine. I want to win the X factor. I don't know what it might be. It doesn't matter. But they're all expressions of your magnificence. When you fully embrace everything that you have, you see around you, whether you judge it to be restriction, limitation, or a gift, it's all gift. We have to see everything, everything as a gift. Once you embrace that, the leprous beggar that's coming to sit at your beautiful dinner table, and you go, oh, hello, welcome, sit down. And yeah. then we mean it from the heart, then it is not. So when I get a cold, you know, it's a little, another little bit in my dream. There has to be some benefit from having to spend two weeks not, not being able to whatever it is move uh, but when you say and I'm, i just know that listeners are going to be thinking this so if i'm thinking it, it's likely right so when you say that you know you just become one with whatever it is right yes. even a cold even a what, cold, a, what about that even voice? Anything, anything anything but what about that voice that in a way is like or that pretend self in a way saying yes i play along with this because you know i kind of maybe feel like i need to play along with this uh, restriction or whatever it is, but there's another part of me that is really rallying everything against that, that is really antagonizing, right? And then you have to then explore. You have to practice self-inquiry until you get to see that the opponent is the beloved. The apparent opponent or the apparent restriction is a gift because something more is always going to come out of it, always. It's, it's the way it is because the universe, let's call it, or consciousness, or life, or whatever you want to call it. So the thing is, is as what, what Jesus said, judge not. Do not think, oh, this is terrible. And there is a little contraction, if you have observed it in workshops, that happens in the solar plexus when something, according to mind, goes wrong. If you know that you are all of it, in, and we are in a world of duality, with the mind here for some reason to experience this and the opposite. I remember Hermes Trismegistus when I first met him as a little old man and he said to me, highest of high, lowest of low, nothing to do, nowhere to go, earth and water and wind and flame, I am that which has no name. And it's this highest of high, and I knew that the ability that I have that was given to me through the most horrific experience of, uh, you might call Kundalini or energy, energy explosion or disruption. And I came to have this, this vision that I have, which is most people would have when you get to absolute neutral. It's more like a post-death view of it. Hmm? I have that. But I also have, and also experience so much of this the wounds and the and the, the 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 restrictions and the sorrows and the deaths and stuff like that. I have learned to be at peace, ill, easy, and even curious about everything that happens in my life. Even though I really wanted to get the song of Rahu out last before Christmas, when Vanessa said, "Oh no, let's do the pre-sale, let's do this," and and I'm going, "All right then," because she's saying that. 
And I'm thinking it's going to take me a bit longer than, than that because I know I'm digesting it within my body. And having Rahu as the beloved opponent means that I, I have wanted in this lifetime to experience lots of contradiction. Because for some, and we won't go into what all the reasons, but yes, I have much more understanding now. And how I began with this, this life of being a little Catholic, you know, loving Jesus. And every little time something hurt me, uh, I would hear, oh, that's one thorn out of the crown of Jesus. I mean, it's a load of Jesus' thoughts. It's, it's nonsense from where I am now, but it wasn't nonsense then. It shaped me. Not that I, not that I would wish anybody on the experience inside, it on anybody. But we can make choices, and we are here to make choices. And this is why we are, why we are in duality. Why would we be in a world that just always includes its opposite? Why would we be highest of high? We are the absolute. We are sovereign. And yet the lowest of low. And, and you're lying there <clears throat> streaming cold, or you've got an, an upset stomach, and you can't get to the loo in time. And those kind of real difficult, humiliating things in the body itself. I know, I know that it is possible. I've seen it happen in others. People I know, I've done things or I've experienced things like driving through a car. How can one car drive through another? Just because I closed my eyes, because I took my attention away. I've inquired and it said to me, you take your attention away from what is impossible and know that it can, everything can be both and. But if we are living in a grounded way, of, oh, well, I want to taste a raspberry, so I get a little red thing and I taste it. And, and if it's not distinct, dis differentiated, hmm? it's not really a restriction. It's more like a differentiation. You know? I like that word, yeah. I think that's a better word for it, yeah. Yeah, if it's a differentiation, because otherwise, how would I enjoy the exquisite taste, the best of a little fresh, organic, beautiful, wonderful, homegrown raspberry when you put it in your mouth and you, oh, hmm. How could I have that if there were not differentiation? And we are here in this world, but it also could be the, the absolute opposite. So there's so much of exploring. I will tell you the, the real way I, that's that's my perception <clears throat> for me has been nana yoga no the, the yoga of, it, of mind of because it's all a mind it's all it's all not just mind but mind with imagination and love and especially the togetherness like just you and me talking like this we wouldn't be doing it if we didn't enjoy it there's something pleasurable but you know like philosophers sitting and talking and exploring mm -hmm. And then if we stay open to looking at everything and then choosing the bits out of it that we want to experience, and even if mine says no, go to the heart and say, yes, I fancy that. I'd love to fly one day. I did fly a plane once. I was, I was about 19. And in those days, we'd have all these rules about flying. And uh, I must have been really attractive and whatever, but the captain took a shine to me and came and invited me into the cockpit. And I flew the plane. Wow. I said, I'm not really flying, am I? He said, yes, you are. Turn the, turn the whatever it was, the, the, it was a wheel, some kind. Mm -hmm. Turn that way and you'll see the plane turns. I mean, God, they would have his guts for God. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in those days, I mean, I'm, I'm 18. You know, we're talking about, about 60 years ago. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Wow, so you did fly. You have flown. I then. did fly, <laughs> but I mean, me getting, so I go in my imagination. No, but when there you I, go. You have flown. <laughs> I've also, I've also, in a way, but not to my satisfaction yet, teleported other things, and I also am, have explored a lot, uh, living simply on prana. I haven't done long, long periods of. You see, the thing is, they call it dry fasting, right? Mm. Not having liquids. But if you saw it differently, like giving your system a rest so that it could explore other sources of nourishment. I mean, what fun. Just, just change the way you look and use the word curiosity about anything that bothers you in your life. So I'm talking to anybody that's listening. Anything that is a disturbance and see, just be curious about 
what do you want, not how you're going to change it, but be curious, investigate, and go, oh, what would I like instead of this? I don't know. Win the lottery. There are people that know how to do it just by shifting their perception, you know. You can and how have, about not even saying it? How, how about even just the experience of not being well itself, bringing that desire to be that, well? That, that, that is a possibility if we are, uh, uh, let's say, toxin-free. If you're toxin-free and you're samskara-free, you've, you've dealt with your samskaras, or you, you make a, a statement that I'm completely free, whatever it is. You have to, everyone has to find the way for themselves. But you can get support by listening to what other people say and being curious. If you just dismiss it and say, that's too uh, way out. No, it's not. You bring up a really important point there about some scars, of course, because Saturn, though all the planets, all the blueprint reflects like some scars in a way. It's like this is your blueprint, right? This is a map, even though again the map isn't the terrain. It's it's your experience that counts, but it is a map. So Saturn is the part of the map where it's like this rocky shore <laughs> that you know we probably don't want to go into this rocky shore at the moment. It's kind of stormy, but yeah, we're here right? That's Saturn also. And it's kind of like those things where, and I know this is childish in a way when you hear this, but I, I, it's the only way kind of to relay this is that Saturn represents the places in the past, whether past or past life, even you've taken. Yeah. And this time you got to pay back. Like an accountant says, you owe this to me because you taken here. And so it's often taken away and it's painful, right? So it's like, how do you, um, when we talk about again Rahu and and flipping all of that on its head, how do we approach okay. our samskaras, our blueprint, okay. then, our our groove that we've got into, and we're getting into again, because, and it's coming around exactly, again? Exactly, because it's only a groove, and once and as it's on an exponential curve, what we call the waking, real waking up, realizing that you are sovereign, and if I if I, I'm sovereign, so if I am, then. Where the areas of restriction or 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 um, limitation that I would prefer differently, but from neutral, not from a big emotional. Oh, I can't be happy because that's there, but just observing neutrally from the heart. You have the power to experience it for a moment, when it's recognized and seen, like like the leprous atiti coming in to your beautiful dining room. When you go, oh, hello, Krishna in your mind, your heart, he's no longer the leprous beggar. As you see, this is the real, one of the real laws in my empire, if you like. As you see it, so it is. Not even so shall it be. Mm -hmm. So it is, and so you will experience it, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. And it can change like that. And yeah, I know that. And I've ex I experienced that all the time. We all experience that, you could say, but like, maybe we don't always consciously acknowledge that, but we all do, I think. And, you know, if you're going on a trip with someone and you just get up on the wrong side of the bed, as they say, and you go off and you have a terrible time with them, but the same person is your best friend other times. And it's like, you have a great time when you're in a different headspace. Because it brings up some old frequency or some old relationship that because of that particular time configuration or astrological, what we just, and so you you meet a different, a, a, a different, you know, more grit in the oyster. This always um, fascinates me that we can always pull out whatever we want from someone. So apparently you are Kishori and you look a certain way to me and you say certain things and you act a certain way, but I'm sure, and that's maybe the Saturn type of it. That's the Saturn sort of framework I've got now in my mind about you, but I could, I'm sure pull lots of things out of you that I, you know, if I were in a different state of mind myself, could, you know, invite from you, right? Yes. That I don't see, that I haven't heard. Yeah, lots. Right? I mean, we've got one little conversation and we've, we, we've, we've, I mean, otherwise we'd talk about anything. We could be talking about, you know, what book did you read last week? And then we could spend a whole hour doing that. Mm -hmm. But because we focus, we create a focus, we structure a riverbed, a limitation, a structure, uh, and it says loosely to start off as a Capricorn and or I mean a row in Capricorn. Um, and, and in fact, it doesn't actually stay there. It's a starting point because each of us is really not what we see. We are a space through which your own magnificence will shine if you are curious and interested. And we are doing an investigation 
a curiosity, a kind of, uh, some part of us enjoys each other's company. Some part of us is, you know, is having a, uh, a, a good time because otherwise we wouldn't do it. We wouldn't, if we didn't just feel there's a frequency uh, to uh, seem to be explored, we wouldn't have begun. So, so, but we don't just get exactly that the, the, the realistic thing, if we were writing a, a, a clever intellectual book on, on uh, Rahu and Capricorn, we probably we wouldn't get anything like this. But because there's also a looseness around, there's a freedom around what we speak about. That's for me, it in a nutshell, I think you've basically hit the nail on the head there, because really what we're talking about with Rahu and Capricorn, which seem kind of diametrically opposed, is that we do have to have a template, like a focus in the first place. But then it goes from there, it opens up and it like ex we explore different things. Because it's a space. Every human being is a portal. They look like what we might imagine a human being to be. But we're a portal. I love that. Everyone. But you won't get it through looking at it being well grounded, uh, realistic. Let's not call it that word. That mm -hmm. we are all far, far more than we seem to be, and we all are uh, uh, through the heart or the that imagination or the feeling. We are a doorway to so much more. I and wish we could all do that though, because we obviously we don't do it all the time, and all of us certainly don't do it all the time. Normally, what we do is is look at someone the way they are and then judge them based on the color of their skin, the, the role they have with a man or woman, whether this, that, and the other, all of these things, first of all. And then when we get to know them a little bit, then we have a whole other bunch of labels. And then further and further, we have these constant labels and we mm -hmm. might put someone aside because of certain labels we don't like, right? Even though they're a portal. So, so, so knowing that they are a portal or even imagining or intellectually accepting that they are always... There's, there's so many more uh, aspects and dimensions and isn't the same. You have to make it innate. You have to be curious. You have to be interested when something cuts across. So when a leper turns up at your table, you be curious. I mean, row in the song, you know, I am betrayal and despair, famine, rape and the scavenging dogs of war. And still I am the beloved. How can serves in mind and so many philosophers and writers how can the problem of suffering or the problem of evil they call it a problem am i being said if you don't want any problems don't see any problems and there won't be any problems this was got to be oh, i don't know maybe 40 years ago and i began this part of the research in my life <clears throat> and it just said that so i went okay if there are no problems and i'm seeing a problem he also talked to me about, there was one boy who came, he had uh, acne, it was, his mother brought him, must be about 15, 16, and I talked to him, and, and he could, I couldn't see them. There was one little spot on his face, you know, and he was very beautiful, really gorgeous, you know, a lovely 15-year-old handsome boy. And um, I, I, it took a little while for me to get him to shift his perception, but my being was said, tell him about picking the silvering on a mirror in your mind not necessarily picking a spot, but you can do that with picking a spot. But if you look and pick and pick and pick, there's nothing left. And then, you know what, you know, the, the capacity to see the real. The real is always there, shining through everything. And problems are only there if you judge them to be. And I, and I know it sounds totally, totally off the wall. No, not to me. And I know, no, and not to you, but not to anyone who is actually curious. You don't even need to go to the heart. You just have to actually take your attention, have a little mechanism. And I just teach people, just put your hand on your heart because it's the simplest thing just to do that. And you've made contact with the body and you put your hand on your heart and you go, okay, I'm willing. Show me, show me more, show me more. There's a door closed here. I want to be like Alice and, and, and just with a, a breath. It, it, to, to, to for the door to open. And I see that, that the, the, the experience of, the, of what they used to call malefic in India, <clears throat> Saturn and Rahu and such, all sorts of situations, you can make them by anguishing over them into disaster zone. But when you get practiced at, being, at seeing with the eye of the heart, 
you can do like a Rishi could or a, 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 a race from the dead. I mean, that's a, like a metaphor. I'm not interested in very much in going raising the dead, but but making a situation which is like a total disaster into something extraordinary. You see, but you've got to because it's all mind and feeling mixed. And when you go into total control, that was talking about this, this in groups, the, 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 the contraction, if you look at it, in the solar plexus, that when something goes, uh, something that you don't want, something you don't like, or uh, going over the, the story of what happened for you last week, and you tell a long tale about how you crashed the car, and this happened, and that happened, and, uh, and you can go down, down the drain from one thing to another, and then, and then they didn't have the key, and then I didn't have them insured, and then I did well, whatever. You know, you can go down the hole to infinity into a total contraction, but the, it starts with the first step in the body, which I've noticed in the solar plexus. People go, <gasps> it's a little, <gasps> little tiny little thing, and then you end up being a like a, a quasimodo contraction like this because the mind has immediately gone into fear and contraction instead of uh, opening into a wider angle, the heart frequency. Heart math have explored a lot, but I, I mean, my, I, I looked at some of their, their stuff years ago because I was in a, um, a, a group of people that wanted to play with it. But I knew that my way of looking, just looking, can take me way immediately into a state that you have to put uh, a piece of software on and make the balloon go up and down and all of that. <laughs> I couldn't be bothered. And it looks like laziness, but it's, it's not. It's a kind of uh, allowing, allowing yourself to see another possibility. And that quite sometimes that can happen immediately. And sometimes it takes a little time. It's like getting pregnant. You know, everything has its time. Everything takes its time. It's so fascinating. You're bringing up these topics. And I know this podcast is probably going to be a bit longer and in typical Saturn fashion, because Saturn is all about the long haul and time and time passing slowly. But one of the things is literally that is that, you know, we can maybe sometimes feel a bit stuck sometimes and or resist or are bored or, you know, depressed or fearful. And we this kind of contracted state and we resist that. Right. The thing to do, yeah, and the thing to do when you notice all of those states which seem to be involuntary, and they are when they come up the start, is to consciously go, oh, curious, and claim that this is, know that this is for my benefit. It will, it will stop you from where you, you know, the route that you were on. And on the mind, if the mind is in separation from the heart frequency, then it will judge it. But if you don't make a judgment and you don't go into that contraction or you notice where there is a contraction, put your hand there and calm the body down. Um, I had a, um, I remember years ago, I had a yoga teacher who was telling me how he, he, how he did um, yoga as a child and um, he, would, he got scared of it because he saw the changes in his mother's friends and things. People have a problem. I know that if I have some difficulty and I just allow my body to do spontaneous unwinding or I, I put my hand on my heart or I, 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 I change the frequency, I do not have to experience that emotion of fear. It takes me to where I know that I am sovereign I change the, the, I can use my imagination, I can use my breath, I've got many little tools I can use to change the frequency. And anyone that's played a little bit with yoga or the body knows how simple it is to be willing, but there has to be a willingness to not stay with the contraction and move to the place where there is a, a, a spaciousness, the heart frequency. So here's the, here's the rub though. You can change the, 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 the script. Here's the rub, though, because this is indeed what Saturn, you might say, represents. I remember years ago, the first article that I kind of got, you know, out there on my website, I think the first article I wrote for Timeline Astrology was called The Imp of the Perverse. 
You oh, know yes. that, right? You know that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Edgar Allan Poe. So basically, that's like a type of Saturn type of experience where there's just this thing that I know I really shouldn't be doing and I shouldn't be thinking this way, but I just cannot help myself. You know, it's like it's just there, and I like there's an enjoyment of it as well, even. Well, I, I, you've told me that before, and I and I see. But what's wrong with that? Exploring what it feels like. I mean, is there anything? What, there's why... nothing wrong with it except for when someone who isn't consciously doing that then consciously saying i don't want this i don't want this over and over again and have making themselves miserable and yet on some level they actually are really reveling in that sort of and and complaining about it and you know it's all okay. always negative okay, so, right? so 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 if you genuinely want to change that um addiction if you like or that tendency genuinely you take a time when you're not like that and you go to the place of the, that you are more integrated, if you like, where you can make more conscious choices and change it then. Sometimes it's not possible to change because of momentum what you've got set up because you've got a law set up in the unconscious or a rule that I want moments like this to experience the, the contraction or whatever it is. But if when you're not in the middle of it, when it's not on a roll, you can go to a place like right now, like you're being clear and say, what do I really want? Do I want that tendency to go on in my psyche, in my, my story? Would I like to change it? Change it with all the tools that you obviously have that there are, there exist so many tools to explain or to state to your, what I call the inner file manager or your unconscious or your whatever you want to call it, and, 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 and then make it really clear. Now, how do we input that? Yeah, by repetition, by being stating it clearly, by doing some movement, by doing all sorts of ways that I know and tools. I don't need to explain all that to you. But take a moment when there is clarity. Remember what it was like. I, I remember um, uh, years ago learning psychosynthesis, years and years ago. I, I used to get stuck on all sorts of things, thinking, well, I'll go and do this. And, and then I realized from psychosynthesis that I had so many different beings and personalities. And I began to do a little bit of investigation when I was not in a state and move to, to um, making different laws, different rules, so that the, uh, I would imprint into the unconscious my conscious choice, knowing that that I am conscious and I am unconscious. I've got all of that potential and I can have anything I want. If you don't remember it when you're more conscious and you don't take action, then, then it must be that you want it to go on. But there's a reason, there's some benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Pleasure, whatever it is, and only you know. But if you truly don't want it to continue, truly, truly, play when you're feeling clearer. Remember it. Keep a diary. Write it down. That's the value of keeping a, a notebook. That is so important for people. And to the hear. magic book, the magic book that I'm that I've written, that I'm producing at the moment after this, is that one where you write uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. I call it that, but most people don't know what Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva are. So it's like what, in your garden, you plant new flowers that you would love to grow. You, 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 you maintain the garden, that's the Vishnu bit. You maintain it, enjoy it, and take care of it, and love it, and you know, shine on them, smile on the flowers, which are beautiful, and notice, and whatever. And then there's the bit where you've got weeds, and thorns, and briar patches, and that's the bit, that the, the third section. And then you consciously, at some point when you feel like it, you weed the garden. You compost the weeds. Because there's energy in what you're describing, that pattern, there's energy locked in that. Mm. And if you want to use the energy for experiencing that, it's your choice because you're sovereign. And you will, only you and nobody else will know the benefit that you get or the pleasure or the whatever it is. But there's pleasure out of, I suppose, for taking cocaine or something. But I mean, it's a bit. So it's, it's you in your wholeness decide, is this what I want for my magnificence? Or do I not? Without any, um, what should we call criticism or anything, just 
it's neutral. You go to the neutral place and then you will know whether, you, whether that is a, a flower or a rose with thorns or a, or a weed or what, you, you, you'll know because you're sovereign of your life. But you have mentioned it a few times, how you love that. Well, no, I, I guess what, what my thought was there was that, well, I guess to kind of further that thought astrologically, Saturn is Saturn, which is that kind of impish quality, but Rahu is furthering that quality. Rahu is like a distortion in a way of Saturn, it's alter ego. So Saturn is just, this is what is, you know, this is just what is, right? But Rahu likes to twist things. Yeah. Distort things even further. So that's even more impish. Right. So if if Saturn were like um, a cold wind blowing in, it's like, you know, a cold, stark, you know, early morning. It's like this is the reality of the situation. Let's deal with it. Right. Rahu is like a tornado coming in and you can't see up from down. You're in a spin. Right. But they're, they're both air. They actually both rule the air element. So there's that kind of progression, I guess, from one to the other and why it's important to talk about, because Capricorn does progress into Aquarius. Saturn does progress into Rahu. But what happens when Rahu then progresses into Capricorn the other way around? Because Rahu always goes the other way. <laughs> so it's going to go into Aquarius in a few years, then it goes into Capricorn. So it's like we're having to kind of, you know, understand this spin cycle in a way, coming back to that stillness, I guess, really. It's that, but the cycling of these states from one to another to another, to more intense to less intense to whatever it is. As you wake up to know that you are the one that made the planets, you are the one that examined them and, and decided or, or, or realized their qualities that came with them. You are the one that exists before and beyond space time. You are that pseudopodia, pseudopodia finger penetrate, penetrating the, our snow globe, our bubble of the psyche or space time. You know the power to do what is considered impossible. What great yogis or rishis or a Christ or a can do, and you go, wow, that would be cool. The minute you have a genuine feeling of curiosity, but I am that one, I am the same. My nature is the same. Cannot be any different nature, I've got a different form, and I have given permission or I have uh, agreed to having this definition, this, this structure, this, these clothes, this body, mind, this right now at this period, knowing that what we're talking about is not nonsense. You can travel with your mind in time and in space and therefore you are that consciousness. You're not this current clothing, not this current, it's what you have right now. And because it's a child of your heart, you love it. Otherwise, you wouldn't. You love being Gary. Otherwise, you wouldn't be Gary. You know, you don't want to eliminate Gary completely and go and be something else. But there may be little things that you would like to change. You are sovereign. You can with intention, with focus, with thinking to the heart, with curiosity and willingness to allow. You can see what you've already changed in your life through your choices in your expression. You've already changed it. We, we are the absolute unlimited consciousness, but we wanted to experience limitation, restriction. We wanted to experience definition, being little tiny fragments. We wanted that. Or the I that is we wanted it. I, I, we haven't got the language because it can't be want, it's not the word, but it had the movement of being but it's all for joy. It's not to sit in hell forever because actually there isn't a hell. I mean, there are experiences, it's a state. And we don't fully know yet what these amazing uh, gifts of these bodies, these body minds are yet. We don't, we're nowhere near, We've, we're not yet born. We are in the process of so imagine every single time you get to something that you are curious about or a closed door and you'd like it to go, you go, yes, don't accept limitation. Or we can actually say, well, this is really cool. 
I, I am, and it, it, it shows you more in a more precise way the definition of what you want to express. But everything we do is expression. Well, Kishori, I'm I'm conscious of time because we've gone over like way over, and it's been a pleasure as always. I didn't know where this was going to go, and I have to say, I really got a lot from this, and I hope people listening to this will feel the same. I think you've really changed our minds about Saturn while talking about Rahu, its alter ego. So thank you to Kishori for coming on the podcast again. And thank you to you for listening all the way through to the end. If you'd like to continue this conversation with Kishori, you can go to her website. It's magicmakeover.com. That's magic with a K at the end. M-A-G-I-C-K hyphen makeover.com. She also has a website, kishori.net. That's K-I-S-H-O-R-I dot net. And you can find details there about her upcoming Song of Rahu she is about to release. And you can pre-order your copy now. My own website here is TimelineAstrology.com. You can also find me on Patreon.com forward slash Timeline Astrology. I write daily reports for patrons as well as monthly forecasts and sign-based monthly forecasts as well as the Scorpio Video Club. So that's a club where I share the secrets of Indian astrology. And again, you can join there on the website and continue this conversation in the astrology with myself. So I hope you enjoyed that. Again, thank you for listening all the way through and until next time.